there's a good chance that by now, you've come across cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin, and like me, you probably don't really understand it or care about it. But Bitcoin recently piqued my interest when I came across articles claiming its high carbon footprint. For example, one article claimed that Tesla's $1.5 billion investment into Bitcoin had the equivalent carbon footprint of 1.8 million gas vehicles. Other articles illustrate Bitcoin's energy intensiveness as the size of certain countries, and some articles even claim that Bitcoin could solely push global warming above 2 degrees Celsius. While this is pretty shocking, I couldn't help but be skeptical at these claims as there wasn't much comparison to other sectors or what the future projection of Bitcoin's energy and emissions would actually look like. So I decided to investigate for myself and ran the numbers. In this video, I hope to give you more perspective and clarity over the true carbon footprint of Bitcoin. So let's dive in. Before we head into the carbon analysis, here is a brief explanation of Bitcoin. So crypto nerds are quite unhappy about the idea of a central government or bank issuing currency or transactions, as they are prone to theft and fraud. To tackle this, a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer system is proposed that has more transparency. This is a digital blockchain. Now, each block consists of a set of transactions that took place, like a ledger. For a new block to be added to the chain, a very difficult cryptographic puzzle must be solved to validate that these transactions took place. The puzzle solvers are called miners. Once solved, the block is then added to the end of the blockchain and the miner who solved the puzzle is rewarded with freshly released Bitcoin, after which the process starts again. As more puzzles get solved, the puzzles get harder and the successful miners receive less Bitcoin. This means that the amount of Bitcoin that can ever exist has a limit, which is 21 million Bitcoins. For this video, this is as far as we need to go, but if you're interested in learning more, I'll leave some useful videos below. So the process of solving puzzles to receive Bitcoin can be referred to as Bitcoin mining. Now, as mentioned, the puzzles are not only difficult, but they get more difficult to solve. This means it requires a lot of work. And in the physical world, this work is energy that fuels enormous computers to power Bitcoin mining. This is where we begin our carbon footprint analysis. Now, Bitcoin's carbon footprint is very uncertain. There's a lot of debate on the topic, so take all of my estimates with a grain of salt. I'll leave my sources and notes for you to dig through afterwards. Bitcoin's current estimated annual energy consumption is 97 terawatt hours, with an annual carbon footprint of 46 megatons of CO2. The world emits around 50 gigatons of CO2 a year. So Bitcoin alone is responsible for 0.092% of all global carbon emissions. While that is something, it's nothing devastating. Now, China is responsible for 65% of global Bitcoin mining, and it's projected that in China, Bitcoin's energy consumption will peak at 300 terawatt hours by 2024, releasing 130 megatons of CO2. If we assume similar Bitcoin energy consumption growth in the rest of the world, then we are looking at a global peak of 461 terawatt hours, releasing 200 megatons of CO2 a year. So let's take another step. Bitcoin makes up 68% of all cryptocurrency energy consumption. Assuming other cryptocurrencies will follow Bitcoin's trend, the sum peak energy consumption of cryptocurrency would reach 678 terawatt hours emitting around 294 megatons of CO2 a year. For comparison, this is now similar to the energy consumption of the current banking system at 650 terawatt hours. Like the articles, if we now make cryptocurrency a country by its energy consumption, it would be sixth. But its carbon emissions would still only make up 0.6% of all global emissions. As a country by carbon emissions, the sum of all cryptocurrencies at their peaks would rank 23rd, above Spain but below Poland. As you can see, when we use carbon emissions, cryptocurrency places significantly lower in climate impact. This is because emissions make up more than just electricity generation. So let's go another layer. The 294 megatons of carbon emitted for 678 terawatt hours of energy generated gives an average grid carbon intensity of 434 grams of CO2 released per kilowatt hour of electricity use. That's a similar carbon intensity to the USA's grid mix of 40% natural gas, 90% coal, 20% nuclear, and 20% renewable. This is the most debated and uncertain number. 
One side of the debate argues that crypto mining exploits China's cheap coal and that the carbon intensity should be higher. Others claim most of Bitcoin is renewable as most of it is mined in China's provinces which are abundant with cheap hydropower. Truthfully, we do not have enough data to say, but even if all cryptocurrency at its peak had a super carbon intensity of 700 grams of CO2 per kilowatt hour, it would still be responsible for under 1% of global emissions. For further comparison, livestock is responsible for 5.8% of global emissions, iron and steel account for 7.2% and cars account for 10%. But wait, wasn't there a paper published in Nature claiming that Bitcoin alone could push global warming above 2 degrees Celsius? Well, actually it's been debunked by the academic community and more accurate scenarios find that Bitcoin cannot solely push global warming above 2 degrees Celsius. Now, none of this is the green light to mine cryptocurrency as we do. I just wanted to provide a more truthful perspective given I felt Bitcoin's carbon footprint was being blown out of proportion and being quite misleading. While cryptocurrency is not going to be the cause of climate change, its emissions, like the banking sectors, is still very significant and sustainable cryptocurrency should be taken seriously. For a start, we simply need more data. Later, the energy use and sourcing for crypto mining will likely need to be regulated, although regulation kind of defeats the point of blockchain's decentralized system. So it's pretty clear we need more debate on cryptocurrency, weighing up its financial benefits with the sustainability of the planet. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section, and if you enjoyed this video, then do click on the like and subscription buttons.